How to Warp Text in Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, Kerry Hawkins here with another VectorMade.com tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about warping text using the envelope distort. And you'll see in front of me I have kind of three ways I'm going to show you how to do that. One is with a warp setting, uh, the second one is with a mesh, and the third is with a top object. So let me just delete that real quick and I'll show you. If you want to kind of follow along, just type out some text. I uh, use the word warp. Whatever word you want to use is fine. It all works just the same. Um, and select your text and then come up to object envelope distort and make with warp. This will pop up your warp options and it should default to arc with a 50% bend. Um, this is going to be the style. So as you can see, each one of these has a slightly different uh, style to it. And you can kind of shuffle through these to see what it looks like. You can also, while you're in here, press the up and down arrow key. So I'm going through every warp that I can see here. Um, so spend some time taking a look at that. And I'll also show you what they all look like in a minute because I have them all typed out on another page. Um, this is going to be the bend, which is really the intensity of the warp. So it usually defaults to 50%. Um, you can just grab this slider and move it up and down like so, as you see. Or you can use your up and down arrows while you're in here. Um, I'm holding shift to go by 10% at a time. That's usually how I like to do it. Get to where it's close and then fine tune it with 1% or 2% here or there. Um, if this is at zero, there's no warp. <clears throat> so you usually want to have it on something other than zero. The distortion down here is going to be uh, on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. So if I start uh, clicking up, you'll see that the horizontal will shift to be heavier on the right side. If I come back over here, it will shift to be heavier on the left side. And go back to zero and the same thing for the vertical if i do this it's kind of star warsy text if i come this way um i'm not sure what that's more like but it's the opposite of star warsy text <laughs> um so if i'll go back to zero also if you want to click up here um usually the style is set to horizontal but if you want it to be vertical this is what it would do and then again i'll just show you what that looks like going up and down here and then going up and down here so You can get some pretty cool wicked distortions using this. Now, once you have it warped the way you want it, <clears throat> if you click on it, you should have these options. Uh, and, and real quick, let me just make a, a, a quick note here. I like to use under Window Workspace Essentials Classic. Many of you may actually be in Essentials. And if I switch over there, you should have a Properties tab. It will have the same stuff that I'm referencing. But I prefer the Essentials Classic because I like to have this be my Properties tab that's always updating depending on what I'm uh, clicked on. So I'm, I've selected the warp. It's going to bring up the envelope options. So here is Edit the Envelope, and this is Edit the Contents. Now if I edit the contents, it's talking about the text. So if I want to double click and get in there, I can come in here and change this to something else like Hello. Let me click off so you can see, right? So I'm in edit the content right here, but this is edit the envelope. So if I'm in edit the envelope and I want to come over here to grab my direct selection tool, I can actually come in and grab these points and click and drag them out to make um, a customized warp out of the default warp. Now, not like this is going to look good. I'm just kind of showing you what can be done because um, there's a lot of options here. See, that's really distorted and creepy. Looks terrible, but I would never do it. But, you know, uh, it gives you an idea of what you can do to play with these warps. Um, I think you could do some text and then create like a cool warp just on one end of the text, you know, um, maybe make a logo out of some text that way um, to give it some uniqueness. But anyway, very powerful tool. And here on this page, I'm going to just kind of like zoom in on it and uh, you know, feel free to pause the screen, take a look. These are all of the uh, different settings within the warp uh, stylings. 
that are set to 50% at their default. So you just take a look at that um, as long as you need, kind of give you an idea of what they can do. Okay. Now I'm gonna back up a little bit. Let's see, I'll just back up till I get my text, okay. I'm gonna grab this text again, go object, and we're gonna go envelope distort, make with mesh. And this will bring up the envelope mesh. I would go ahead and hit preview if uh, I were you. And you can set the number of rows and columns. So if it's one and one, it's just gonna be basically a square. If I do two columns, you'll see this is split in the middle. Two rows, it'll be split here, and so forth. You can make as many rows or as many columns as you'd like. So let's just do two and two for simplicity's sake. Hit OK. Now count, you're going to get your direct selection tool again, and you can grab on these points and drag them out like so. Now this... Uh, might be a little bit easier than customizing one of those default warps, but it's up to you. You know, whatever, whatever you, wherever you see the possibility, you go with it, right? Just telling you everything that it does, so that maybe you might see uh, something that someone else doesn't see. You know, that's the beauty of doing art. Um, but this is, you know, this would be like a really good way to have a controlled type of warp. Um, you know, something like that. Again, it doesn't look great. I'm just kind of showing you what you can do here. Uh, so that's that option. Again, has has the same uh, qualities here. You can come up here and uh, change your options. This one, however, will change the number of rows and columns. One thing you might have to be careful about is if you start with a whole lot of rows and columns and then you come back to lower it, it could distort things quite a bit um, and make it kind of unusable. So. My recommendation would be to start with fewer rows and columns and then add from there. <clears throat> but you can always reset the envelope shape as well, like so. Um, so anyway, uh, that's that one. Now let's back up again until I get to my warp and we'll go object. Actually, first I gotta make a shape. Let's go ahead and make an ellipse and I'll make it green so that you can see it's on top of the text and it doesn't even have to be perfectly on top let me show you what you can do click and drag to select both objects the text and the shape that you made then come over to object envelope distort make with top object boom it will put your text inside of whatever shape you just just said whatever you decided to use so um and if you want to you can double click on this to get in and change the text as well so let's just do you know Hello again. Oop, I you put a W at the end. <laughs> Can't spell. Um, so there's hello instead of warp. See? And if you want to, uh, if I do a, a outline view, which is view um, uh, over, uh, uh, excuse me, preview right here. And if you go view outline, uh, you'll see that it's just text, right? So um, if you want this to be an actual vector shape, you would come to Object and hit Expand, and then click OK, and it will expand it out. Now if I go back to Outline View, you'll see these are actually just lines and shapes. It's all vector stuff now. And you could come in and then edit each one of these little points if you wanted to for whatever reason. You know, Obviously, you wouldn't want to do this, but just again, give, just letting you know that you have the option to edit all of these points here. So. And that is it in a nutshell, how to warp text using uh, three different types of envelope distort. And I'm going to show you one more bonus here um, because sometimes you want to have text like on a path. Let's do a circle again, a really simple circle. And I'll go ahead and like just make this a black stroke with no fill. And then you come over here to your text and type on a path tool and then just click somewhere on the path and you'll see it will give you lorem ipsum text. Well, if we just say warp again, let's use our text here. Now I've got warp that's on a curve. Um, if you wanna make changes to this, what you can do is double click on type on a path tool and it will bring up your path options. So hit preview so that you can see the changes you're going to make. Rainbow is usually what I do, but if you go through these, skew will kind of skew things to um, be straight up and down. 
uh, to kind of align with gravity a little bit. Um, 3D ribbon. Uh, I hate using this. I never use it for anything, but th that's what it does. Stair step, uh, same sort of thing. Just always looks jagged to me. I, I rarely ever use it. And gravity. Um, well, I, maybe if I make it bigger, you could kind of see what gravity does as opposed to um, skew. Oh, preview, click it on. See, skew does that. Gravity does not. Rainbow does the same thing. So I can't even remember what gravity does, I'll be honest. It's been so long since I've used it. Um, so I usually do rainbow or skew, um, depending on where it is. And then baseline is going to be like the bottom of the text is pretty much in line with the um, outline of your shape. Ascender will go beyond it. Descender will go the other way. Um, center is going to be right in the middle of it. And then baseline is your automatic. Um, this is for spacing if you want to do that. You know, you don't have to do it here. You can always do that in your text editor. And I usually do. I don't, I usually leave this at auto and don't mess with it. If we click flip, it's going to put the text on the other side. This is where I typically will say, um, you know, do something like a sender to get it on the other side. So let me back up a little bit here and show you kind of what normally happens with um, aligning text to a um, uh, circle. So uh, what I'm doing here is hovering over these little brackets. This is the uh, end and start of your text. So what you can do is wherever you click, these are going to show up. And what you can do is say, well, I want the text to end about here and I want it to start about here. And let's just increase the size. If it goes beyond this, it's going to disappear. Act as though it's not there, right? So, and you'll get this little plus says, that says you have text that's not visible. So let's just say we want warp right about there. And then if we wanted to put some text on the other side, we would, uh, you know, here we make a copy and I'll just do this, double click on this again, I'll flip it, preview what that looks like. I'm gonna come in here and move my text a little bit. So it's like this, I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna probably go back in here again to do, let's see, a sender. Yeah, we'll do a sender. I'm going to wiggle this around a little bit more so that it's like more centered, you know, and you can get perfect with this, but I'm just kind of eyeballing, not too worried about it. Um, and then often if I do a sender, another quick trick is I will come into here to set the baseline shift and bump that up a little bit so that it's closer to the line. For whatever reason, a sender always overshoots the line. Um, and when you do, normal without flipping on the baseline it's going to be right on the baseline and usually you want these to be you know identical so uh, let me just align these centered uh, both ways and then i can shrink it down a little bit whoops whoops and kind of move it over here show you that would be the gist of like <clears throat> putting together a uh, circle text on like a circle logo say your logo's here and you want text above and below do something like that real basic but it's a little bit easier to do it that way than it is to do warp text sometimes. But play around with it, guys. Let me know which of these um, effects or styles works best for your work or which one you, you think you'll go to most often. And leave any comments and questions down below. Go ahead, like, share, subscribe, do all that jazz. And I will see you guys in the next video.